It's easy to get caught up in the spectacle, the wind, the wreckage, the waves, the raw power of a storm like Hurricane Helene. But when all we see is destruction. I mean, these are all just family photos. We miss the real story. My grandfather, my grandparents, her. These are all black and white photos. The quiet devastation. The lives turned upside down in an instant. The ones who don't make the headlines. I mean, you can see how high the water line was. It was coming in all sides of my house, all the doors. My poor dog and I were laying in bed listening to it just pour in. That's the small picture. And I was okay with just throwing it out when it was just wet pieces of paper now that I look at it all and think about it and tell a story. It's like, ouch. I'm going to stop some of you right now. I know what you're seeing here from Florida after Hurricane Helene makes some of you shrug after you've seen the devastation that's hundreds of miles to the north in the Carolinas and Tennessee. In Florida, the devastation doesn't scream. It simmers. It's quieter, easily overlooked by the headlines, but it leaves its scars all the same. This isn't some twisted competition of who suffered more. The destruction on St. Pete Beach is just as real and as painful as the wreckage in the Carolinas. This storm didn't discriminate. It didn't care where it hit or who or how it hurt. One thing we have to remember, pain doesn't have to compete. Yes, there is catastrophic damage in the mountains of Carolinas and Tennessee, but there were suffocating floodwaters here in Tampa Bay and the suffering's the same. Yeah, this home is still standing, but many homes in this neighborhood alone are going to be torn down because Homes like this just can't exist here anymore. It's not sustainable, not after so many storms and so many floods in such a short amount of time. It's tough to claim 12 dead and 20,000 homes and businesses wrecked in one of the country's biggest media markets are overlooked, but that just shows you how brutal Helene has been elsewhere. Still, I'm here. This is my home. And these are some of the stories from the worst storm to hit Tampa Bay in a century. Hurricane was 100 miles west of us. I wouldn't have bet a million bucks this storm surge was going to happen. Um, we get hurricanes, you know, a couple times a year. Never thought this, you know, this devastation would happen here, but. 6.04, it started coming up over the wall. At 6.40, it was probably uh, halfway up my leg in the parking lot. And I'm like, oh, the, and the high tide hadn't even started. It was that low tide and the water was coming over the wall. So uh, 6.55, I left. The road was completely covered. This whole road was completely covered. There was already a car broke down in the middle of the road because it flooded out. So I hopped the curb, rode the curb, curb all the way down. I was probably the second or the last car to get off the island before that sturge hit. So one thing to consider as you see car after car getting towed away from the beaches here in Pinellas County, all these cars that are sitting underneath the apartment buildings where many people stayed because they are obviously elevated, they're totaled. They were under several feet of water themselves and so many people who stayed said the cars were floating. Bam, it just flooded and this whole place, it felt like we were in the ocean. I mean, I was sitting on my balcony watching and I'm like, I'm out at sea. And there's waves everywhere. And then we watched the boats come floating across. Boats floating across an entire parking lot ending up against this row of homes that are right along the causeway as you make your way here to Treasure Island. So it's just getting rid of that darn mud, but you can see how high the water came. So it's got three feet yeah. or so of water in here. Had yeah. you ever had water inside? Never. No. In 19 years? No, not a lot. And it's a sturdy building. Yeah, you can see the yeah. water line on the chair here. And I have a feeling I know nothing's going to work either. As far as It'll I'm start going. rusting. Yeah, I yeah. unplugged everything today just to make sure when the electric goes on that it's, you know. Yeah. Along the beaches here in Tampa Bay, Hurricane Helene acted in a way sort of like a blizzard. You can see just how many feet of sand was carried in with the record storm surge. Now it's piled up as people have to dig out. And an area that is always welcoming to guests at this point, they're just so overwhelmed. They're trying to recover what they have left. And everybody else, they're saying, please stay away. The beaches aren't open for business. Our attention spans are small and our memories short, but how can you forget Tropical Storm Ada in 2020? I'm stuck. You're stuck? 
or Hurricane Adalia, just last August. Hurricane Helene swept in storm surge three to four feet above Adalia's storm surge. The result, the costliest storm in generations. I'm stunned by yeah. the water line here. Oh, it's even higher <laughs> inside. <laughs> well, I guess the walls are out now, but yeah, that yeah. like came up during it, so that's not the full water line. I think it's probably about here, but you'll be able to see inside the walls. Um, it's probably still wet with cement. Yeah. You can see it was up to here. And you guys closed in July? Yeah. July 1st, yeah. yeah. And so started slowly moving stuff in. And when was the official move-in date going to be? It was uh, the 29th of September. So three days before this all happened. So yeah, we actually, we were planning on moving down on that Sunday. And then we ended up, I was trying to get my friends to come out here and see what was going on, but no one had access to the roads because they were so flooded, even two days after, so flooded. So finally someone on Saturday came and they literally told us to sit down before telling us what happened. Um, I saw some pictures and we decided to just drive down Saturday night so we could try to handle it. And we're doing the best we can right now with it, so. And had you actually spent the night in the house yet? One, yeah. You, you spent one night here? Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> we got one night in here and you know, we, we wanted to test it out. We actually, it was when we closed, we had a hotel and we were so stoked, you know, so we're like, we gotta get something in here ASAP just so we can sleep in it for one night, so. And it was comfy for the night, honestly. Yeah. It was and this very... is your first home. Yeah. 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 It was very peaceful, but it's really a shame that this is, you know, the first experience I'm having with buying a home. And I was so excited about this, obviously. Florida's housing market is like a dangerous game of hot potato. For years, homeowners have built in vulnerable areas, riding the allure of coastal living while passing the risk to the next buyer. It's the cost of clinging to the illusion that you can beat the odds. Here, paradise always comes with a storm attached. Once that storm passes and all the hype dies down, people forget and then people start buying again. After Adelia, I noticed it a little bit different. There was a much more buyer resistance in these neighborhoods. Um, finding buyers for these homes, we didn't have multiple offers like we had been seeing in other neighborhoods. Um, there was much more resistance to buyers uh, because they had just flooded. They were much more difficult to sell. A lot of homes that I see on the market today, just looking, have been on the market since they flooded in Adelia. They were renovated, they've been on the market, they haven't sold, and now today they're being sold for lot value because they also flooded during Helene. This is having a transformative impact more than any other storm because now homes are not being put on the market to be sold as a home. They're being sold for what is known as lot value or what the dirt is worth. One of the reasons that homes are being sold for lot value is because FEMA has restrictions on how much you can invest in remodeling a home. So this home that was destroyed in the flood, the owners can only put a certain amount of money into renovating it before they have to bring the entire thing up to current FEMA code. So for example, if this home might, they might only be able to put $50,000 in renovations into it before they have to bring it entirely up to code. And that might not cover the entire cost of renovations. And that means lifting it? Lifting it, yeah, in most neighborhoods. And that's why we're seeing today a lot of people saying, I flooded last year, I flooded this year, it's gonna be impossible to sell my house, I can only put X number of dollars into doing it anyways, I'm just gonna sell it for the value of the lot, and some investor will come in and buy it and put something new up. This might be controversial, but if you wanna live along the water here in Florida, this is the future. Homes built over 20 feet high. If you don't, this is a reality that can come within just a few hours from a hurricane like Helene. Is that sustainable even in a neighborhood like Shore Acres though? You know, I think that that's a matter of opinion. I think that a lot of contractors will tell you that it's sustainable. I think that the city will tell you it's sustainable. Um, I sit back and I think, okay, these homes that were built 50 or 60 years ago, we thought at the time that they were built that the way they were constructed was sustainable. And now 50 years later, look at what we're dealing with. I would be concerned that what we're gonna construct today might be fine today, but if we're not thinking about what our climate looks like 50 years from now, we're just gonna see history repeating itself. Unfortunately, you're gonna see a lot of homes like this one where they're gonna go in and put it back together. It'll be beautiful, but if we have another storm like this, they're gonna be right back where they are today because they're 
not as bad as the last owners, but the last owners had a pile in their yard like this too. You knew that it had been flooded before? You knew yes, that the... yeah, but I mean, you know, I'm sure you know that it's not heard of really to flood and we knew it was minimal flooding before. It was not this major of a project, you know, if it were to flood from what we heard. Um, definitely did not expect this. This neighborhood in St. Petersburg is an alternative to building one of those sky-high houses along the waterfront. The homes here are further inland. They sit at about 50 feet or so of elevation. One thing you're going to notice, there aren't the sky-high piles of debris, just a few tree branches from the winds Hurricane Helene knocked down. The bay is only about five minute drive from here. The beaches, 20 minutes or so, but the properties here ironically sell for a fraction of the cost of those along the beaches or the bay. But in a worst case scenario that unfortunately the hurricane models appear to be showing hitting right here in the Tampa Bay area in just a few days, where I'm standing could be one of the last dry spots in the entire county.